Well, hi there, it's Jacqueline McGrath here. It's Thursday, it's 3 p.m. and it's time for me to do my cooking class. Now, I'm not sure if you're familiar with this, but this is our Epic Box. This is a subscription program and I am loving it. I mean, I, I love all the product, but what I love is the surprise. Because in this box, not only will you save money, but you're gonna find seven different meal ideas that you can maybe play around with, like I'm going to do today. And because the shipping's built right into the cost, it's actually very cost effective. Hi, Dan, nice to see you. Anyway, so today what I thought I'd do in the box, hi, Dodie, Dodie. Um, I would show you what we got this month. Now, when you subscribe to this box, it changes every month. This is the April box. And in the April box, we had spinach artichoke dip, crispy crunchy lettuce, wraps, pad thai, sweet and sour stir fry, classic meat uh, meatloaf, citrus lime cheesecake. And today what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to be making Philly style cheese steak, right? Hi, Linda. Yes, Philly style cheese steak. Um, fun food fact, and I'm, I was not really aware of cheesesteak. Have you, have you had cheesesteak before? All right, well, one of the reasons <clears throat> I wasn't um, really that interested in it is I'm not a big beef eater. So needless to say, when I'm doing this today, it's going to have a bit of a twist to it. But here's some fun food facts about it. Um, my fun food fact is when I was in Lake Louise, I, my husband was busy, so I was sitting in the bar. Yep, I was in the bar. And there was a young guy that was sitting there, and of course, you know me, I was just chit-chatting, and he said, oh my gosh, he says, I love it in Lake Louise. And I said, what brought you up here? And he said, of course, your claim to fame in the Rocky Mountains is your skiing. And I said, well, where are you from? And he said, Philadelphia. I said, I've never been. What's your claim to fame? Yeah, Philly cheesesteak. So I said, okay, I've never had that. What's in it? Okay, here's what he told me. I just about fell off my bar chair. It could have been this serious. I could have died. Just kidding. But he said, it's beef. I could go up. He said, cheese whiz. And it's like, are you serious? Cheese whiz. 100% cheese whiz. So what I'm gonna do today, guys, cheese whiz is, it's a science experiment. There's no cheese in cheese whiz. <laughs> there is none. It started back in the, oh gosh, years and years and years ago. It was, it's this highly over-processed, no cheese in it product that Kraft makes. Now I'm gonna show you how to make it all that much better using Epicure products because we don't put artificial anything in our stuff. You're going to see this amazing meal come together in literally minutes. So let's get started. So right now I'm going to let you know, go start your oven. You need to put your oven on to about 250 degrees. Hey Linda, you love my, you love provolone. Yeah. And actually if you use provolone, apparently it's not a Philly cheesesteak anymore. Did you know that? It's, it's called the Pro V American. I didn't know that. Like I said, not I'm not uh, that up to speed on this. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna get your fry pan and um, get that heated, put maybe a little bit of oil in there. Of course, if you're using ribeye steak, that's normally what you put on a real Philly cheese steak. But guys, I know that there's so much money um, being added to your bills right now at the grocery store, right? Have you noticed like things are so dang expensive right now. So why not instead do something a little different? So we're gonna do, you could do ground beef, so you're a little bit more traditional, but you know me, I've got ground chicken breasts. Yes, laugh. You know me, I never follow instructions. This is why I love being my own boss and having a fun job like this. If you guys are looking for a fun job, you know where to, where to find me, come join me. Anyway, so we'll get our ground chicken or beef because we're going to save money and we'll get this going. Now, I've got to show you this awesome little thing we've got going here. Looks like a propeller of a boat. I'm getting excited. Summer's almost here. But this is called 
our meat separator. And when you're using ground meat, I don't know if you've ever noticed when you put it in a pan, it sort of clumps together. Well, this is going to separate because it's sort of sharp, not sharp enough to cut yourself, but sharp enough to actually chop this up. Because normally if you're using hamburger and trying to separate it because it's all clumpy, you may be scratching the bottom of your really nice fry pan with a knife. Not the best thing to do, okay? So we need to add some seasoning. So let's get this Philadelphia cheesesteak going. I've got some really nice knife, um, scissors, I should say, that we can use. And if you're wondering why I always chop the bottom, it's just so I can display pretty. And we're gonna put, roughly put, this is what it looks like. We're gonna put about half of this package right on top of whatever meat you're cooking it up with. Okay, leaving the other half for later. We'll be doing that in just a second. So I want to just make sure that I mix this up. The oven's on at 350 degrees, heating up. And this is a little kitchen hack because I don't have hoagies. That's normally how it was made. But instead, I'm going to give you another cost-saving idea because I call my meals now that I'm making the frugal feast because I want to show you guys how to save money. And like I said, ground beef is very inexpensive. If you buy your ground chicken or whatever when it's on sale, literally shop the flyer because you can always freeze this stuff. Okay, so I'm just cooking this up. Now while this is cooking up, we also need to have peppers and onions. So I'm gonna use our ceramic knife. I love this knife. You guys have probably seen it before. It's got a protective sheath over top of it to make sure it's well protected. And we're going to just slice up some onions. I love onions. You can put as much as you want on it. I think the instructions say to put one full onion on here. So I've got a half an onion. I think that's fine for me. We're also going to add some peppers. Don't you love how nice this uh, Knife cuts. I'll just scrape my chicken here in a second. What we're going to do as soon as the chicken's sort of cut, chop it up again with our meat separator. And I, like I said, I love that this meat separator doesn't damage your expensive fry pans. Great. Okay, we'll just keep going with like this. Okay, now the other thing that we're gonna add is mushrooms. Must have mushrooms. If mushrooms go on sale, here's a little tip that I do. I actually cook my mushrooms up. If I cook my mushrooms up in advance, I can freeze them. And yes, I freeze them um, to put in casseroles or whatever. So seriously, if you're wanting to save money on your grocery bills, definitely look at Epicare because our average meal package that I'm showing you today, the cost is about $4.00 per person, if you're buying those food meals that come to your door with the, with the produce and the meat already in it, you're probably paying like $9 per person. It's ridiculous. Guys, I don't know, are you made of money? Do you have a money tree in your backyard? I don't care how much money you make. You can make a, a tasty meal at a fraction of the price. Why wouldn't you? You notice I'm using a spatula here to just clean this off. I'm now going to use this more. This is in our kitchen utensils. So there's a whole bunch all in a set. Now, they are sold in a set, so if you're thinking, oh my gosh, I really would like to have those kitchen utensils, the best way to do that is host your own cooking class because we give away half price items to our qualified hosts. Um, right after I finish this cooking class, I'm heading over to Tracy's house and I, we're going to do an in-person cooking class with her friends tonight. A great way again to save money because uh, a qualified host never pays full price for anything. Hey Stephanie, good to see you. Hey Joy, nice to see you as well. Have you made made this uh, cheese stick before? Okay, so this is almost done. I want to make sure I cook this in advance because we're going to put this in the oven. So as soon as this is done, and I think it's almost there. I'm going to remove it. Oops. 
and I'm going to put it in a four cup prep bowl. These uh, bowls are a product that we carry at Epic. I love them. As you can see, I've got a few of them in the house. They're very, very handy. They have these lids. Great for prepping. Great for doing uh, puddings and things like that as well for the summer. But you're going to see me right now. Just add this. Oops, no, you can't see it. I'm off the screen. I'll show you in a second. I just don't want to put my hot bowl on the the glass and break it. That would be a little embarrassing, wouldn't it? Okay, so we've got that going. So there you go. So my chicken's just set aside for now. Again, it could be ground beef. Hi, Joanne. Great to see you as well. Okay, so we've got the next half a package of our Philly cheesesteak. So again, we're just going to put a little bit of oil in here. You'll, you might have noticed I was using this basting brush. I should have mentioned this before. I love this. Have you ever had a, um, you know, one of those bristle brushes that's, I don't know, falls apart and never gets clean? Well, I love this because it doesn't melt. I can spread items around and it can go quickly in the dishwasher and I know it gets clean. Love, love, love this. This is our silicone basting brush. Okay, so I'm just going to add my veggies in here. I like putting my onions on the bottom because I find that I like them caramelizing a bit. So we'll get those ones started first. Then I'll add my peppers. And of course, I'm going to add my seasoning. Hopefully I didn't lose you there. My alarm keeps going off. I obviously didn't want to forget about this cooking class. Okay, so then I've got my cut up mushrooms as well. We're going to add those. We're going to add that half package. Remember I said roughly about half a package. You notice, for some of you, you like following the instructions exactly. If you really wanted to measure it out, you could. But it's all getting mixed up together. It just doesn't matter. So the, I will add the remaining Philly cheese steak flavoring to that. And if you're wondering what the flavors are in here, let me read them to you. Garlic, onion, cornstarch, organic coconut sugar, mustard, smoked paprika, organic apple cider vinegar powder. Uh, we've got black pepper, ta organic tamarind powder, and uh, a lot of yummy flavors, right? So let's get my saute spoon again. Just stir this up. Get this cooking. I can see my oven is now heated up. So while this is just sweating and cooking up a bit, I want to show you how we're going to make this really nice cheese, the real cheese, right? Okay. Hi, Cindy. Okay. So to make real cheese, we need to start with, I guess, some cheese, right? And in your um, Epic box this month, we have the mac and cheese. Oh my gosh, guys, <clears throat> you don't need, just need to make macaroni with this. This makes a fabulous cheese sauce. And for those of you who like a little bit zippier option, you may want to consider the ooey gooey queso. Doesn't matter, depends on your flavoring, okay? <clears throat> Brenda, which one's your favorite? Mac and cheese or the ooey gooey? So what we're going to do is we're going to make a cheese sauce with this. So I have got... Um, in our prep bowl, these bowls are sold in sets of four. I've roughly got about a third of a cup of warm milk. <clears throat> okay, you can use oat milk, almond milk, whatever you want. We're going to grab our trusty scissors again. Let me make sure all the packaging's at the bottom. And we're going to add this. To our milk. And you may have saw my little handy dandy little mini whisk. Love this little little thing. Perfect for in the kitchen. It's great for doing eggs or just those little jobs that I'm doing right now. But basically with warm milk, it's a lot easier. It blends faster. I'm just going to stir this up and make sure I've got all the little lumps taken out of this. Then I'm going to add, in a second, I'm just going to twist this around a bit. 
and lots of flavor. Yum. Now you're just gonna cook this until your mushrooms and your peppers and your onions are cooked up. Actually, you know what? I think right now they're good enough. I can add my ground beef or ground chicken in this case back in. That way everything's gonna stay hot. Now that's a lot. Can you see how much this made? Amazing, right? This will definitely feed a family of four. All right, so we've got that cooking. We've got our cheese mix going here. Now, because it's warm, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna add, because I want it to look like cheese whiz, right? I'm gonna add just some grated cheese. I put the cheddar in there only because if you're really trying to pretend that it's cheese whiz, and they put the artificial colorings in, I'm gonna just add real cheese. I'm gonna put this in the microwave for about, I don't know, 45 seconds maybe. It's going to just melt nicely, and it's gonna become a sauce that looks like cheese whiz. So let me just put that in the microwave. Uh, one thing I will also say, let me just turn this down a bit, is, you can put these glass jars in in the microwave without any problem. Don't put the lid on it though. Because if you put the lid and snap it down really firm, it's going to maybe explode on you. So never, if you're gonna set a lid on top so it doesn't splatter, that's what you do. You set it on top, but leave a little bit of a space. Just a little tip in the kitchen. Okay, so one second, let me just put this cheese sauce in the microwave. And one more thing, this product, this is called our three-in-one spatula. I love this, but it's leaving our line. So our new catalog is, starts on May 3rd. If you want a three-in-one spatula, grab it while it's still available, okay? Because this will be gone on May the 3rd. It's done, benito, benito. And you know you're gonna see me use this in my kitchen. Okay, so I'm putting this in the microwave for 45 minutes. All right, okay, so now let's show you another little hack here. Now, if you're gluten intolerant, I, I don't know if you've noticed this, but people who buy gluten-free bread, have you ever noticed how dry it is? And if you're wanting to save money, sometimes you can go to the bakery area. I don't have a gluten intolerance, intoler really. I'm not celiac, but I do tend to try to avoid as much gluten as I can. But this was on sale. There's nothing wrong with these buns. They're whole wheat buns. And I wanted to show you a little fun thing. If you're doing a summer um, picnic with your family, you may want to just try this. It's gonna be such a great idea. Not hoagies, but you're saving money. I'm gonna use a knife and I'm literally going to cut these in half as a block, right? Because I originally said that um, cheese steak is made with hoagies. That's an expensive kind of bread, and you might not have it handy, but day-old bread works fabulously because we're gonna toast it in the oven anyway, okay? So, we're gonna set that aside. We're gonna make some mayo because this is gonna be your secret sauce. So in the four cup prep bowl, I've got a little bit of mayo, and in here we're going to add, what is it? You guys, do you know which my favorite spice is that I use almost all the time? Roasted garlic aioli. Oh my gosh, I love, 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 love this. So we'll grab our four and one spoon. And because I've roughly got about a quarter of a cup, I think uh, a teaspoon should be probably enough. If you really like garlic, maybe a teaspoon and a half. But I think um, because I'm gonna be meeting some ladies later tonight at that cooking class, I may want to be a little bit kind to them. This is our uh, silicone knife. You can use this to just stir it up. Now, the directions for doing this aioli are right on the jar, but I do want to let you know, it does say put a squeeze of half a lime in here, or, or lemon, I should say. I don't have lemon. You don't need lemon. Hi, Glenna. Hope your family's feeling better now. I know that you guys are a little under the weather. Okay, so we've got our, our aioli done. Let's just pull this aside here. 
And now we're going to put it all together. This is how quick it comes together. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to put some roasted garlic aioli on here. Oh my gosh, secret sauce it is. Now, you can well imagine that this is going to be a little bit of sort of like a taco night. You know what I mean? It's going to be falling everywhere. Because this is ooey gooey, tasty, yummy, delicious. I would venture to say that this is going to become one of your family favorites. But you may want to wear an apron or a bib. It's that good. And you'll love it. Okay, so I've got my aioli on here. Next, I'm going to get some of my chicken or beef or whatever you're using. And I'm just gonna set it right on top. Keep it as much as you want. And if you've got a family of six or eight or 10 or 12, of course, you know these buns are usually sold in packages of 12. It will actually fit on a, one of our big baking sheets without any problem. There's just Dawn and I. Two of these is gonna be just fine for the two of us. I don't need to overcook. But if you are cooking um, for just a smaller amount of people, I mean, I've made this up in advance. This can now be tucked away, let it cool down, put it in a freezer bag, label it, and stick it in the freezer. Then all you need to do is reheat it, and boom, you can make this meal again. Let's go grab that cheese. Okay, does it look like cheese whiz? Seriously, and with real cheese. Okay, so you can see the consistency is really nice. It's warmed a bit, it's quite thick. It even looks like cheese whiz. And what we're going to do is we're just going to make sure that this is drizzled over top. This is sort of like a binder. This will help a little bit with the messy, ooey gooey, oozy, yummy, tasty part of this. If you have any leftovers, it's great as a dip. We're just gonna put our top on. And as you can see, I flipped it the wrong way. It doesn't really matter. I could flip it over, make it look a little bit better. And normally you would probably put tin foil over top of this when you're baking it in the oven. Now everything's sort of cooked. We just sort of want the cheese to sort of melt and everything to sort of come together. So to save money rather than tin foil, because when you buy the quarter sheet pans, you can get the quarter liners and you get two of them. You can literally just set this on top. Doesn't need to be covered. We're just sort of steaming it and we're going to put it in the oven for about 15 minutes. Now I've done the TV version. So just give me a second. I'm going to grab a oven mint. I can find one and I'll pull out the one that's been in the oven. Two seconds. All right. So, oops, probably should put a heating mat. This might be a little hot. Yep, hang on a second. I don't know if you've ever seen this, but this is called a roll up rack. It's super, super handy. I like keeping it over top in my sink. And basically, Good luck with your vet. We'll just take this off. You can see that my buns are crispy, delicious. Now, if you want, you can cut them. Make sure you don't cut onto your liner. I'm just sort of pushing down. Everything's sort of pre-done. But imagine having, a, you know, a large group of people and you did 12 of these. It's already pre-cut for you. Just put it on a plate and you're good as golden. So there is your Philly cheesesteak. It's a little hot, mm, but mm, so, so, so tasty. So remember, this is all in the Epic box. When you discover that it's one of those meals that your family absolutely loves, make sure that you grab the Philly style cheesesteak and your mac and cheese, which always comes in handy. Any time in the kitchen, it's good for sprinkling on popcorn, for making kale chips, and as you saw today, making your own homemade cheese sauce. So thanks guys for popping in and seeing my cooking class today. I wish you could come and taste this, but if you really want to try it yourself, just purchase, you can go online. And for those of you who are 
close and would like to have a cooking class, please know that I can do virtual ones or I can do in-person ones. I would love to do a fun cooking class with you and your friends. Take care, everyone. Have a fabulous day and uh, bon appetit. Bye for now.